In this video, we're going to look at the T method, a technique for calculating the ideal or theoretical mechanical advantage of any system. This is a valuable technique for any aspiring roping technician to have in their toolbox, and while initially it takes some focus and sketching with a pen and paper to pick up, with practice you'll be able to apply it quickly and efficiently in the field. At first, applying the T method will involve labelling every point where a rope interacts with a system component with the tension on the rope or component at that point in the system. With practice, you'll be able to take some shortcuts to focus on the key areas of the system that you have an interest in. We call the tension that we apply to the system T, and we label the tension at every other point in the system as some multiple of T. It may be 2T, 3T, 0.8T, or so on. The easiest way to understand the T method is to walk through it with a simple example. But before we do that, there are two simple rules that will apply over and over when using the T method. The first rule is how we treat pulleys. Here we have a rope entering and leaving a pulley. If we say that the tension on the rope entering the pulley is 1T, and if we're looking for ideal mechanical advantage, not considering the efficiency of the pulley, we also say that the tension on the rope exiting the pulley is T. The tension on our carabiner attached to the pulley, we identify by adding together the tensions on each of the ropes coming out of the pulley. In this case, 1T plus 1T gives us 2T at the carabiner. If we were looking for theoretical mechanical advantage, we need to take the pulley efficiency into account. If we say the efficiency of this pulley is 90%, and again, the input tension is 1T, our output tension is going to be 90% or 0.9 of the input tension. 0.9 times 1 is 0.9, so the tension on the rope leaving the pulley is 0.9T. Again, to find the tension on the carabiner above the pulley, we add our two rope tensions together. 1T plus 0.9T is 1.9T at this point. The second rule is how we treat rope grabs ascenders, prussics, and so on. Rope grabs allow us to add tension to a rope. So if we say this length of rope, and we're going to ignore the pulley for this part, if we say that this length of rope has a tension on it of 1T, and I'm going to attach a rope grab, the rope grab has a tension of 2T on it. To find the tension at the rope in front of the rope grab, we simply add the two tensions together. So we have 1T pulling on the rope below the rope grab, and we have 2T applied to the rope grab itself, giving us 3T on the rope above the rope grab. Next we're going to apply the T method to a simple 3 to 1 and a compound 6 to 1 to find their ideal mechanical advantages. Finally, we'll introduce a complex mechanical advantage system and use the T method to find its ideal and theoretical mechanical advantage. Here's a system that should be familiar to us all. We'll start by labelling the whole strand with the tension we apply, T. For now, we'll focus on ideal mechanical advantage, ignoring friction in pulleys. This means we can come down from our input tension to the first pulley we made and label both the input and output rope tension as T. Now we have the tension of the rope on both sides of our pulley, we can label the other side of our pulley. T plus T is 2T. Now we'll follow the rope until it meets the next pulley. Again, we can label the input and output rope tension as T, and again, we have T plus T, or 2T, on the other side of the pulley. Following the rope to the figure of 8 attached to the load, the rope still has a tension T. Now we've labelled all the components in our system, we can add them up to find the forces on our load. At the load, we have 2T from the pulley and T from the knot, giving us a total of 3T. That means we input a force of T, and the load experiences a force of 3T, confirming that this is a 3 to 1. Before we're done, we can sanity check our results. If we draw an imaginary line down the centre of our system, and add the tensions leaving the system on both sides, ignoring the total at the load, because that would be double counting, they should be equal. On the left, we have 2t from the pulley and t from the figure of 8, for a total of 3t on the left. On the right, we have 2t at the pulley and t on the whole line, also giving us a total of 3t. 
It's not impossible for this check to turn out okay, but for our analysis to still be wrong, but it's an easy thing we can do to check our analysis, and it makes it pretty unlikely we've made an error. Now we have a compound system that we saw in a previous video, and we'll again use the T method to find its ideal mechanical advantage. If you think you've got the hang of this, you might want to pause the video here, work it out yourself, and then come back to the video to compare your results. Once again, we start by labelling our input force T. Following the rope down to the first pulley, we can label the rope entering and leaving the pulley T. This gives us the tension of the rope on both sides of the pulley, so we can find the tension on the rope grab. T plus T is 2T at the rope grab. Returning to the rope, with tension T leaving the pulley, we follow it to where the rope enters the next pulley. And again we have T entering and leaving the pulley. With the rope tension of both sides of the pulley, we can add those to find the tension on the anchor side of the pulley. Again, T plus T is 2T. Following the rope from the pulley to where it enters the rope grab, the rope has tension T before the rope grab. The rope grab adds tension to the rope, so tension T on the rope plus 2T on the rope grab gives us 3T on the rope in front of the rope grab, which is also the tension entering the pulley at the load. This means the tension leaving the pulley is also 3T, and with the tension on both sides of the rope, we can add 3T and 3T to see 6T at the load. Finally, following the rope to the figure of 8, we also have 3T at that point. Doing a quick sanity check, we draw a line down the middle of our system and add the tensions leaving the system on each side. On the left, this is the tension on the load, 6T. On the right, the tensions leaving the system are these ones. T plus 2T plus 3T gives us 6T on the right, which matches the tension on the left. Here we have a complex system. I encourage you to pause the video at this point and apply the T method yourself to find the ideal mechanical advantage of this system. Once you're done, you can compare your results to mine, and then we'll finish by taking pulley efficiency into account and finding the theoretical advantage of this system. Starting with ideal advantage, we start as always by labelling our input tension T. Coming down to our first pulley, we have tension T on the rope entering and leaving the pulley. With the tension on both sides of the pulley, the tension on the rope grab is T plus T, or 2T. Following the rope to the pulley at our load, we again have T on both sides of the pulley, giving 2T on the load end of the pulley. Following the rope up, we have T where it enters the rope grab, plus 2T on the rope grab, gives us 3T in front of the rope grab and entering the pulley at our anchor. This means we also have 3T on the other side of the pulley. Adding those together gives us 6T at the anchor. Following the rope, which has 3T leaving the pulley, to the figure of 8, we have 3T at the figure of 8. Adding together the tensions at our load, 2T plus 3T gives us 5T, or a 5 to 1 ideal mechanical advantage. Once again, we'll check our results by drawing a line down the middle of the system. The tensions leaving our system on the left are the whole line, pulley, and figure of 8, for a total of 6T. On the right, the tension only leaves our system at the anchor, which we've already said is 6T. With 6T on both sides of the system, we can be reasonably confident our calculations are correct. Finally, we'll take the same system and find its theoretical mechanical advantage. All the pulleys in our diagram are Rock Exotica Omnis, which we know have an efficiency of about 90%, so we'll use that as our pulley efficiency in our calculations. Once again, we start by applying tension T to the whole line. Coming down to the first pulley, we have T entering the pulley, but only 90% of T leaving the pulley. 90% or 0.9 times T is 0.9T, so that's the tension leaving the pulley. The tension on the rope grab then is T plus 0.9T or 1.9T. Following our 0.9T down to the pulley at the load, we have 0.9T entering the pulley, which means we have 90% of 0.9T leaving the pulley. That's 0.81T. Now we can find the tension on the load end of the pulley. 0.9T plus 0.81T is 1.71T. Following our 0.81t along the rope, we have 0.81t at the rope below the rope grab. Adding the 1.9t on the rope grab gives us 2.71t above the rope grab, where the rope enters the pulley at our anchor. The rope leaving the pulley has 90% of 2.71t, which is 2.439t. 
Having the rope tensions on both sides of the pulley, the tension the pulley applies to the anchor is 2.71T plus 2.439T or 5.149T. Following the rope to the figure of 8, we also have 2.439T at the figure of 8. Looking at the tensions attached to our load, we have 1.71T at the pulley and 2.439T at the knot, giving us a total of 4.149T, or a 4.149 to 1 mechanical advantage, theoretically. Checking our calculations by drawing a line down the middle of our system, on the left the tensions leaving our system are the haul line and the pulley and figure of 8 attached to our load. Adding these together gives a total of 5.149T. On the right, tension only leaves our system at the anchor, which we've already calculated as 5.149T. With the tensions on the left and right sides of our system being equal, we can be reasonably confident our calculations are correct.